Not many people know this. I guess that's the last time I can say that on this subject. But airplanes have always been a cornerstone of my identity. See, here's a picture of me as a kid. Here's a picture of the first airplane that I built and flew in my yard. And then here's a picture of my bedroom after I'd started building RC airplanes to fly in the lot next to our house. And if you try really hard, I bet you could find some terribly cringy videos of me in my yard flying RC airplanes in high school. So when a friend of mine reached out and wanted me to build a gift box for his flight instructor, it really struck a chord. It's been years since I sat in a cockpit, but I can't wait to get back. The past couple of years, I've been distracting myself with other things in the name of maturity, more realistic goals, saving money, or some other adult sounding thing. But I'm not going to let those things deter me anymore. Life isn't a dress rehearsal, it's a live show. There's no do-overs, no what-ifs, no repeats. I need to be back in the air where I belong. That's how, at least best I can figure, I'm going to be motivated enough to work hard at my other goals. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, what does any of this have to do with woodworking? Hopefully, one day soon, this venture will bring in a lot of money and employ hundreds of people. We could put food on their tables, tables in their homes, and funnel the excess profits and cash towards helping others. And I can be in the air again. I don't want to buy a huge house, I don't want everyone to know my name, I don't want tons of exotic cars or a bunch of other crap. I just want to find a way to help other people while scratching the itch on my soul to be in the sky. So we're leaving our jobs and moving to the south. I know we've talked about it quite a bit, but here's the real story. On our current career paths, there's no feasible way to chase the priorities I just outlined or stick to our life mission of helping the most number of people possible. It's time for a risk. For a lot of reasons. Mostly because we're young enough to rebound if we fail. Because those who we want to help are worth it. Because our future employees and their families are worth it. And honestly, because her sanity depends on it. We can't be employees anymore. At least not in the traditional sense. We just can't breathe. So, at our new jobs, for a few months every year, Jenny and I will be flying on a research aircraft gathering storm data to help millions of people evacuate and prepare in times of natural disaster. But more on that someday soon. With the rest of our time, we'll be trying to build this woodworking business that hopefully one day provides hundreds of jobs to Americans who know the value of hard work who want to see the smiling faces of a family sitting around a table that they built, who don't need to take out giant loans to learn enough to make a living, and who will make a ton of money with which we can try to make the world a better place for everyone. We're so grateful for our experiences here in the Great White North and at our first job. It's been an amazing testing grounds to prepare us to do this at scale. The people have been great too, but it's time for us to go. And projects like this have come along the way to remind us that with the right priorities and plenty of discipline and lots of hard work, we can have our cake and eat it too. Or whiskey. Or I guess airplane if you're thinking big picture. But you get the point. So, uh, that's our story. That's our next chapter of life. I know we've talked about it quite a bit, but that's what's going on with us. That's why we're moving. That's why we're trying to learn sales is because everything that we want to do in life becomes unlocked by this woodworking business succeeding. I appreciate all of you for coming along for the ride and hitting that subscribe button. If you're new and this is the first time you're watching a video of ours, uh, sorry, you kind of caught us in our feelings, but this is where we're at in life right now. And if this sounds exciting or intriguing, we hope that you'll hit that subscribe button and join us. 
All right, so the price breakdown on this whiskey gift box, uh, right up front, we did not charge enough on this project. Um, originally, I wasn't gonna do finger joints on the corners, I was just gonna do butt joints with nails and glue. Um, then I just decided, you know what, hey, we're gonna get this box joint jig eventually, like this is as good a project as any. At this point, we had stopped taking more orders, so our free time was more plentiful, and I, I don't, I'm doing a lot of rationalization, but the bottom line is we didn't charge enough. So if you use our normal pricing structure, for materials it was about three board feet of walnut, which is about $24 in my area, and then miscellaneous glue and stuff like that, five bucks. Um, when you counter in the labor, uh, at $30 an hour, this box took six hours to put together, which is ridiculous. Um, I, now, I counted time of assembling the box joint jig and getting it all set up and dialed in, so now that it's set, um, I don't think it'll take near six hours. This box is probably a two or three hour job now if I were to do it again. So the total quote should have been $24 plus $5 miscellaneous expenses for materials, and then $90, so what are we looking at there? So we're looking at a total of $119 just for labor and materials. Multiply that times uh, 1.4 to get our 40% markup, and we're looking at $166. Um, yeah, probably would have shot for $175, probably would have taken anything around $150 or over that. Um, but in all honesty, we only charged $100. Back when I thought this box was just going to be a bunch of butt joints, I yeah, I just thought that that would have been a great price, and it would have been, but because we used the box joints and everything else, it really slowed us down. Um, I still think we could have gotten this under two hours if I wasn't doing the box joints, especially if I already had some walnut that was milled up. I didn't realize how dull my planer blades were after the big rolling sliding barn door that we had just done before this, so I could have saved time on milling, I could have saved time on the box joints if I already had the jig set up, so anyway... Um, all those reasons aside, we lost money on this project, and that's okay. I learned from it. I, there's a lot of really good things that we learned. We optimized a few things with the box joint jig. We understood that, hey, we need to change our planer blades after we do a really big job with really hard plywood. We learned that. So even though we lost money, it's still a really good experience for us overall, and we would definitely take this job again, but we'd probably price it higher at like 150 175 something like that. Um yeah, that's pretty much the breakdown on this one. Uh, let me know what you think. I thought it turned out really nice. It's it's by no means fine craftsmanship. He kind of wanted, the client wanted it pretty rustic. You know, it's a whiskey box. It's not supposed to be some like ornate, beautiful, like gold inlay sort of like gift box. This was just a, hey, there's some shredded paper in here. That's pretty cool. Let's make it rustic and it'll sit up on a shelf. And yeah, it's a really cool project. So Anyway, other than that, um, thanks for watching the video. Please hit the like button if you thought this was valuable. Um, really helps us grow and, and, and share this information with more people who can help get their businesses off the ground too. So thanks so much for the help and thanks for sticking around. Bye.